In an uncertain world full of breathtaking change, the one constant is American leadership. America needs to lead. The world wants America to lead. American leadership still matters. Strengthening American leadership has been the goal and slogan of almost all U.S. politicians. What does American leadership mean? It means working to build up American dominance in all areas, politics, economics, security, and soft power. To achieve this, the United States believes it must establish its military dominance and that the use of military power can be justified based on the U.S. interpretation of geopolitical events overseas. Now, of course, American military and economic strength will remain the foundation of our global leadership. As we saw from the intervention to stop a massacre in Libya to the raid that brought bin Laden to justice, there will always be times when it is necessary and just to use force. But over seven decades ago, before the start of the Second World War, the idea of the United States as a leading global power was not an ambition of American politicians. It had sought to stay away from conflict. I hope the United States will keep out of this war. I believe that it will. And I give you assurance and reassurance that every effort of your government will be directed toward that end. Thus, the U.S. was the only major power to avoid economic ruin during the Second World War because so little of it was fought on American soil. But the war transformed America's global presence forever, politically, militarily, and economically. Certain countries of key importance... During a conference held at Bretton Woods in July 1944, delegates from 44 countries proposed to establish a new international monetary system. Back then, exchange rates were linked to gold reserves. With the United States holding roughly two-thirds of the available gold reserve, the U.S. dollar emerged as the currency standard for international commerce and trade. This became another basis of U.S. hegemony. With the defeat in 1945 of Hitler's army, the wartime alliance between the capitalist United States and the socialist Soviet Union began to come apart. As the two nations vied for spheres of influence in what became known as the Cold War. Since then, the desire to protect this newfound power and to secure the United States as the leader of the free world has been a fixture of U.S. foreign policy. To achieve this end, the United States started to increase its military budget. A large proportion of this budget flows into the arms industry propelling the U.S. as the world's number one weapons exporter. From 2017 to 2021, the United States accounted for 39% of major arms deliveries worldwide. As another way to shore up its global dominance, the United States has set up about 750 military bases around the world. They are everything from massive military compounds to small airstrips in the middle of the ocean. The United States also builds a network of allies to project its power. On April 4, 1949, the United States joined 11 nations in the signing of the North Atlantic Treaty. The North Atlantic Treaty Organization, or NATO, was initially created to deter attacks from the Soviet Union. But as the Soviet Union fell apart in 1991, the military alliance remained intact and even expanded after the Cold War ended. Since 1949, NATO has grown from 12 members to 30 today, two in North America and 28 in Europe, taking into its fold the nations that were once a part of the Soviet Union. As the Soviet Union and the Warsaw Pact disintegrated, was there a real need for NATO's continued existence, let alone its continuous expansion? I don't see the need to uh, expand NATO, particularly in the period in which uh, the Cold War, which had been the primary rationale for NATO, uh, was over. Since 1952, NATO enlargement has fueled tensions between the United States and its allies on one side, and Russia, the biggest of the former Soviet Union republics, on the other. 
As news spread in late 2021 of thousands of Russian troops amassing on its border with Ukraine. In early February 2022, U.S. President Joe Biden ordered around 3,000 U.S. troops to deploy to Poland and Romania, two NATO countries that border Ukraine. Later that month, on February 24th, Russian President Volodymyr Putin announced the beginning of a special military operation in Ukraine, claiming that NATO's encroachment and its influence on Ukraine threatened Russia's existence. Блок НАТО начал активное военное освоение прилегающих к нам территорий. Таким образом, планомерно создавалась абсолютно неприемлемая для нас угроза, причем непосредственно у наших границ. Россия дала упреждающий отпор агрессии. Это было вынужденное, своевременное и единственно правильное решение. Решение суверенной, сильной, самостоятельной страны. In addition to direct military aid to Ukraine from the United States and its allies, the Russia-Ukraine conflict has pushed NATO countries to increase their military spending. Germany plans to ramp up its defense spending to over 2% of GDP in 2022 alone by $112 billion. French President Emmanuel Macron has also pledged to increase defense spending to 50 billion euros in 2025. Belgium's parliament has approved a bill that will increase its defense budget by more than 10 billion euros by 2030. Poland, which borders Ukraine, now plans to raise military spending from 2% to 3% of its GDP in 2023. The Russia-Ukraine conflict has given European nations the rationale to justify bigger defense budgets and purchases of more weapons. The rising budgets have undoubtedly created another huge windfall for American arms manufacturers. The conflict heightens possibilities of a greater U.S. military presence in Europe, particularly near the Russian border, aggravating already tense relations between Russia and the U.S.-led West. But the United States seems determined to follow the path of military dominance. A Gallup poll conducted in February 2022 shows that only 7% perceived the U.S. as having a very favorable standing in the eyes of the world. But that 68% believe it's important for America to remain number one in the world militarily. The myth Americans tell themselves is that a strong United States is key to world peace and global prosperity. But if the U.S. war machine does not stop and the country is always ready to use force to advance its hegemonic interests, how will the world achieve peace?